Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone out there is doing well. My name is Mike, and we're about to get into a reaction for the film The Changeling from 1980. This is one I'm excited for. This is a request. This is going to be for Pauline. Uh, thanks for letting me know about this one. And, and thanks for checking out the videos on my channel. You're awesome. I really appreciate it. So anyway, um, when she told me about this film, I thought this was going to be a different one. I thought this was um, going to be an Angelina Jolie film, which I've not seen that film either. But uh, And I don't know if that's... Uh, a remake or just it just happens to have the same name but uh, anyway this is from 1980 uh, let's give credit where credits due I'm just gonna read down this list of people who are responsible for this film it's directed by Peter Medak story by Russell Hunter screenplay by William Gray and Diana Maddox so this is one that uh, stars George Scott uh, he was a big actor in his day I am not super familiar with his work but I know uh, he was in a Christmas Carol and uh, from what I remember of him, he was a good actor. So uh, excited to see his performance in this. I am not familiar with any of these other people. Maybe I am. I'll mention it if I am when we start the film. But uh, yeah, this is a horror film that uh, was never on my radar. It, it came out two years before I was born, and I just never really heard about this one. So uh, eager to finally be checking it out. It has an 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. So uh yeah, here we are. I got it on Amazon Prime. I'm just going to read this one sentence here. Uh, in this haunted house essential, a composer moves to a secluded Victorian mansion inhabited by a paranormal entity. Okay, so without further ado, I'm excited for this. Get a drink or a snack. Let's do this. The Changeling, 1980, for Pauline. That's just so perfect. They have the wind, ambient sound of the wind howling in the background. That's so cool. Some might think that's cliche, but I think that's awesome. This is the last holiday I'm ever going home with you. Oh, that sucks. Oh, my father. Oh, it's only a couple million more miles. A couple of what? Million <laughs> more miles. No, right up here we're going to stop. Hmm. Is that supposed to be his wife and his kid? He's quite a bit older if that's the case. I'm going to try to get us some. Help. 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 Oh. Come on, let's have a snowball. Oh, no. Fight. No. No. Daddy. Daddy, come on. Help me, Daddy. No. <laughs> yes. Do you yeah, there we go. For road, There's some help. Twice the help. <laughs> uh oh. This looks like something stupid's about to happen. What the hell? Oh jeez, man. What a way to start this movie. They even did the freeze frame there of him like in mid-screen. Wow. Okay. That's sad. It's just, it happens so shockingly that I'm, you know, I'm not showing emotion here, but yeah, that's sad. So, you know, in my profession, I'm in insurance. I'm thinking on the back end of what we just saw, what would be happening. There'd have to be some kind of uh, liability on the company of that, uh, you know, whatever kind of truck that was, whatever company that was, they have a commercial policy. There'd be some kind of um, claim for, you know, bodily injury and death, probably max out the policy limits at a million, maybe even a lawsuit to collect even more. This piece has like, although a little bit eerie sounding, it's like beautiful simplicity in the melodies there. All these memories are flooding back to him. Daddy! Catch! <laughs> oh man. First, right after it happened, I was in shock. And one day it hit me. Julianne and Kathy are gone. And I just kept walking around the apartment saying it over and over and over. They're gone, they're gone. But that's over four months ago, and uh, what I've got to do now is start uh, making demands on myself. Well, your first class is next Monday. Thanks for everything you've done. Ah, oh, come on. Everyone's very excited about you being here. A well-known alumnus and distinguished composer like yourself. Glad you came. Okay, so he needed some something to fill the void, I guess. That's why he went back to either back to teaching or to teaching. I'm going to find a house. 
What I need is a place I can lock myself in and pound away at the piano all night. I have a friend who works for the Historical Preservation Society. They have some old houses that I'm sure they rent. We'll see what we can come up with for you. Okay, now we got the setup for the house. Four months of grieving too. That's uh, that's not bad. Could be a lot worse. I'm not saying he's not still grieving, but you know, like he said, it's time to get up Hello, and move. I'm Claire Norman. Why don't you hop in and we'll drive up? Okay, she looked a little shady there. Oh, I like that overhead shot here. That's really cool. Almost like spidering its way through all these uh, branches. Is that a word? Spidering? When was the house last occupied? About 12 years ago. Wow. There were plans at one time to turn it into some kind of a museum. Jeez, this is massive. Why hasn't it been lived up? The impression I get is that they haven't tried very hard with this place. Of course, it does need a lot of work. This is too big, man. Kitchen's in here. What does it take to maintain a house of this size? Oh, exactly. We have a man who looks after all these places. Um, Mr. Tuttle. This is the music room. The piano was left here when the society took over. Just too much trouble to move, really. It must be in very bad shape. What are the terms? I feel like any good musician can make use of a a poor piece of equipment. You know what I mean? I'm not like a professional cyclist, but I can have fun on any bicycle. No matter if, if it sucks, I, I can have fun on it. I feel like I should be looking around for clues and stuff. I don't know if there's going to be anything kind of hidden in this on the sides here, but... And again, this house is just too big. I would not want to, to be in a house like this. It's way too much. There's a man at the front who uh, wants to deliver a water storage tank, says you called him. Uh oh. Oh, whoa. That flood of noise there just gave me chills, man. Oh, man, those were the days. For your college classes that big being anonymous you just sit anywhere and you know there's so many people that you have a great chance of not ever being called on standing that there are uh, 23 students registered <laughs> and unless there's a fire in some other part of the building that we don't know about an awful lot of people here with nothing better to do <laughs> so they like him i'm sure there are many of you who may recognize this That was a nice transition there. Oh man, this shot just reminded me. I got to see the uh, U.S. Navy band play a couple months ago. It was awesome, by the way. I'd like you to meet my mother. How do you do, Miss Norman? How do you do? This is John Russell. You remember the Chessman House? Oh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Russell. How are you liking the place? Fine. It's so large. That it is. I'd like to introduce Senator Joseph Carmichael and My his son, God. Congressman. He's going to make another Eugene speech. Carmichael. You know how I hate making speeches. <laughs> Actually, he's on our board of directors at the Historical Preservation Society. Okay, so this senator is going to be important. I'm glad you took the house. That does look creepy at night. <laughs> Just like the way that, you know, the stains are like dripping down the walls. I, I can't get over this, like how how much I would not want to be in a house that big. And it's not because this is like a old styled house and it's out of date. It's just, it's too much. Nice touch with the wind there. So we've only seen one creepy thing so far. The piano key deal. Okay, that's creepy. What the hell is that? Oh, that's so crazy. If you guys watch this on uh, headphones, the, this thumping is pe uh, switching from left to right. What the hell? Was that supposed to be like a clock that, I don't know.
Oh no. What the f- Oh, that gave me chills. Heard someone make a sigh or something. What the f- Mr. Tuttle. I'm chicken skinning, man. Jeez, I'm chicken skinning. Mrs. Rissian uh, cleaning today? No, sir. Just me. Oh, man. Oh, that sucks what he's doing with a cigarette like that. I used to be a smoker. When it's that short and it's like going up to your eyes, it like it hurts so much. That's beautiful. Well, hello. Hi. That's the quality of a lullaby. Yes, it is, sir. Is this some assorted prints that used to hang in the house here? <laughs> um, that was Kathy's, my daughter's. What is she wearing? What are the horse? Like, a, what do you gotta call it? The horse outfit? People who ride horses. You uh, going riding? Yes. Do you ride? Yeah, you know, piano runs in my family. Uh, for me, it didn't take. But my mom played. Uh, my sister played briefly. My nephew is insanely good. He's in a. He got accepted to a music school for how good he is. I'm gonna shamelessly plug him and insert part of his playing in this video. Kathy, how much she loved horses. <laughs> oh no. What the hell is that? Oh, dude, I hate that so much. <laughs> I don't like it. An airlock somewhere. It was too loud. Too rhythmic. So it happened at 6 and at 12. Why would it happen two mornings in a row? Precisely at 6 o'clock. What? It happened at 12 the, the first time. Furnace is like anything else, Mr. Russell. It's got habits. It's an old house. It makes noises. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Very helpful. Well, that's very good. We're still not together on the offbeat. And darling, you're uh, retarding a little too much. In the last four bars. Otherwise, it was splendid. Were you rushing or were you dragging? One, two, three, four. Rushing or dragging? Rushing. So you do know the difference! That's cool, though, that he can have uh, students over to practice and stuff. <laughs> Sounds like a creature or something. Dude, what the hell is that? It was like a leprechaun or something. A goblin. Oh, I think I'm getting it. It's like a spirit is turning on the water. Being a, being a prick or being mischievous. Man, if you had any sign to not be in this house and to choose a different spot, this is it. God, this house is so freaking massive, man. I would be way more freaked out than he is. Oh, by the way, look at that old toilet where you have to pull the thing on the top. Oh my god! What the f- why is he so chill about it? Oh, well, that caught me off guard, man. What the f... Okay. Okay, let's put this together. A kid was killed in this house or something. A boy. What I'm driving at is, uh, has uh, anything like this happened in the house before? John, you're working very hard. You've been through a terrible emotional strain. Excuse me. Minnie? 
Claire, there's a call for you. Your mother. Do you know something, lady? You know there's some question about your lease, Mr. Russell. That house shouldn't have been rented. Miss Norman rushed those papers through our attorney's office. She did not use proper channel. Why should anyone object? That house is not fit to live in. It doesn't want people. And there has been trouble in the house before. Indeed. Okay. See, I knew she looked shady, man. Ugh. He is so relaxed about this. If anything is unrealistic about this, he's a great actor. But he's, I would, you know, a normal person would have been way more freaked out. But, okay, I, that's okay. Whoa, what the? What the hell, man? That's like a sign. Well, it's either a sign or, a, or the ghost is saying, you need to come check this room out. There we go. Oh no. Oh, this is freaky. I'm assuming, you know, Mr. Tuttle, he probably knows more than he's letting on to if this house has, you know, been haunted. What? Oh, there's something back there. It's a fake wall. Oh, no. Nothing good ever comes out of doors that are hidden like that. So that's a weird setup. Why is there a door and a door? You know what I mean? Like, what was the purpose of that? Oh, wait. Okay, so they built this outer section. Okay, because that other door was level with the other door on the outside. Come on, man. Put two hands into that. Hey. What the... F I swear I saw something in that shot where I was looking down. I gotta go back and check, in fact. I did see some- what the hell? Oh, that's freaky. Hit with the rhythm. Come on. There you go. Yeah. Oh, what the freak, man? Oh, that freaked me out. I didn't like that. Oh, god. This is scary, man. Man. There's the broken window. Yeah, I'm surprised no one ever asked the question just looking on the outside like, oh, there's a stained glass window there, and then not finding it in the house, and no one ever questioned it. There's like a miniature wheelchair or something there. Wait, was that on the cover of the... I think that was on the cover of the movie, the poster. Very nice on the dust, too, to make it look very, like, you know, time has uh, not been kind to this room. They even had the detail of uh, the part that was under the f closing desk had less dust on it. Oh, I didn't get to see what that said. I should have seen that coming, that he'd be playing it. Lullaby in F major? I didn't see. Claire, listen, it's note for note. Same tempo, even the same key. What do you think? It's a startling coincidence. But that melody must have been very popular at one time, or it wouldn't be on the music box. I agree, but I swear I never heard it. Oh, he... Recorded it that day you came over. No, something... Okay. It's happened before here. I'm not the That person. was the song he wrote. Miss Huxley. She said the house didn't want people. She's mistaken. She's trying desperately to communicate. Bangings, the water taps, broken window panes. All the glass fell outward. It had to be done from the inside. Everything that's happened has been designed to get me into that attic room. Yeah. Yeah. ESB, January 4th, 1909. Wow. Who could have lived here, though? Look at this wheelchair. Oh my 
It was like a prison, man. It was locked on the uh, outside. Oh no. Is it gonna move? Oh god. Ugh. Man. I look like a pack of chicken, man. Purchased from Society for Historical Preservation, November 1967, through a generous grant from the Carmichael Foundation. That's the senator? Yeah. No previous occupants listed. What is it you want to know? I'm trying to find out who lived in the house in 1909. A man named Bernard, a doctor. Do you have any children, do you know? I believe a son and a daughter. Some kind of family tragedy, I think. He sold the house in 1909. Hmm. Let's have a look here. Man, I remember those in libraries when I was a kid. Cora Bernard, seven-year-old daughter of Dr. Walter Bernard. Okay, hold on. I want to do this myself. Cora Bernard, seven-year-old daughter of Dr. Walter Bernard, prominent Seattle physician, was struck and seriously injured when she ran in front of a passing coal cart outside her Chessman Park home yesterday. She was hastened to St. Margaret's Hospital where her condition remains grave. No blame for the accident has been laid to the cart something. Driver. Cora Bernard. CSB. Huh. I thought it was a boy that I saw in the in the water. Succumbed in St. Margaret's Hospital to injuries sustained in a February 15th accident. Miss Bernard will be interred in the family plot in Brookfield Cemetery. There's the doctor. Hmm. And his wife. And there's the brother, Lord. This little girl, Cora, was killed in the street. It was an accident, almost the same as Cat. What is it in that house, Claire? What is it doing? Why is it trying to reach me? John. Is it because of my daughter? I can't go through all this again. John, you must get out of that house. Okay, so she's not... Maybe she, I was thinking she was being shady, but maybe not. She's telling them to get out. Oh no. Don't be that ball. Don't be that ball. Mmm. Oh, man. It was definitely in there still. Even had it been moved somewhere else, someone <laughs> made it go down the stairs. Oof. Look how blue everything looks out in the distance. Blue and green. Oh, is he gonna throw the ball? I'm calling it now. That ball is coming back later. Oh, I knew it, man. I just knew it. Oh my gosh. How the heck? How does the spirit have reached to, you know, he was not in the house. What do I do now? We have coming here many mediums and spiritualists. Now, 99% are BS. But the 1% astonishing. A medium. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bring on the 1%, man. How do you do? You do. My wife, Leah? No, you go ahead and please. Thank you. Could we have these lights off, please? Yeah, we gotta get into the mood. Is that her exhaling? Is that what that sound is? You've suffered a cruel loss, John Russell. You've lost a wife and child. The presence in this house is reaching out to you through that loss. It is a child's presence. A child mm -hmm. who is not at peace, who cannot rest. We sense that you are with us. Will you talk to us? What happens if they don't bring enough paper? Will you speak to us? Like, what if it finally decides to speak to them, but they're out of paper? Will you speak to us? Ooh. What is your name? Dude, 
They should switch out the pencil. By now, that would have been down to a nub. Are you the child killed by the cold heart? No. What is the your brother? name? Joseph. Joseph. Did you die in this house, Joseph? In that bathtub. Is there someone here you wish to communicate with? John. Help. 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 Ooh. Oh boy. Okay. Joseph, I forgot, was that the brother of the girl? Okay, now what's this thing? Like a giant candle? Will you speak to John? Will you tell us why you are not at rest? You're a clever use of this shot. I'm coming. What do you want of John? What is this supposed to- I've never seen this in like a seance type thing before. How did you die? How did you die? Whoa! Jeez! <sighs> okay. What kind of answer is that? I mean... Yes, there's a presence, but what am I supposed to, what is he supposed to make of the glass flying into the freaking side of the house, into a cabinet or whatever? What was that metal thing? Like that freaking pipe looking dunce hat shaped thing. Oh, he might hear something on the recording. Okay, that's kind of a horror movie trope, but hey, let's get these clues. Killed by the cold cart. No. Hmm. Whoa. What is your name? Joseph. Yes, you heard it. Joseph. Yes, you heard it, dude. Oh. Joseph. Joseph. Come on, man. Did you die in this house, Joseph? House. My room. So the daughter My wasn't father. in that wheelchair. Joseph. Did you die in this house? Your father. How did you die? Father, also, pick up your cigarette. Father. The well Dude, this freaking camera work is giving me chills. My hairs under my, my hat are freaking standing. Oh, jeez. Why? Oh, okay, the, the pounding. Why? Oh, man. Wow, these are... How much time do we have in this movie? These are like... These reveals are coming sooner than I thought. Thing is, why did the doctor kill his son? He had something to do with um that the cart, the coal, the coal cart thing. Claire, yeah, I'm sorry. To... I, I did. I don't feel well. I... Oh boy, what even happened? Panic attack or something physical? Oh no. Was that her? Did she hear it? I shouldn't have called you, it's just that I needed something. I know. <sighs> I wrote some words on the paper. Sacred Heart. There used to be a county orphanage named Sacred Heart. The child, Joseph Carmichael. He was an orphan? Uh-oh. Oh my god! <sighs> Damn! 
Dude, this is giving me so many goosebumps, man. Holy crap. Looks like maybe I can take a picture of these. <sighs> this movie, just a pulse check. It's great. They're making do with a very small budget. They, this is There's some pretty terrifying moments in this movie, and they don't even have to spend much. The score, too. Excellent score. Excellent sound effects. Everything. I knew this guy would be somehow involved later. I'm fine. They've been going through the files. Let me have uh, that name again. I'm very glad to be of help, as you know. What is this shady crap? They've been going through the files. You're the one who clued them into, you know, weird things happening. The house is not inhabitable. Doesn't want people there. It's your fault. What's this dude's deal, man? The senator. That's right. Richard Carmichael and family occupied the house 1899 to 1906. See, Richard was uh, the senator's father. Joe Carmichael, their son, at age three, was struck down with a form of atrophic arthritis. I gotta go back. A lot of important stuff being said. Well, it's decided to send little Joe to the same Nordbach Sanatorium in Basel, Switzerland, for special therapy. Accompanied by his father, he embarked for Europe in October 1906. See how it might have been done. Richard's son, a sick child, was murdered by his father and buried secretly. And then the substitute, a six-year-old orphan, was put in his place, shipped right overseas, right away. Whoa! Even the war worked. Kept him in Switzerland until 1918. He came back here. He was 18 years old. Who was going to know that he wasn't the real son? If he wasn't crippled anymore, it was because he was cured. Whoa, man. Do you think he knows about the murder and about the replacement? I don't know. That is insane. Richard's wife was Emily Spencer. She was the daughter of H.T. Spencer, founded the Spencer Carmichael Empire. He died in uh, 1905. He was a zillionaire. His will might be very interesting. I'm also going to try to find out if there was a ranch, a Spencer or a Carmichael ranch somewhere. Mmm, dude, this is far-reaching stuff. I I would have never guessed that there would be something this massive. Carmichael ranch was located right here. What does that little mark right there mean? It was the location of a well on that property. There we go. In the 1928 Atlas, a house has been built here. Under that house, man. Son's body. I can't believe a father would do that to his kid, man. I don't care if he's like, you know, well, the reasoning is because he was sick. No, there's no reason, man. That's a nice looking house, by the way, with uh, the vines on the side like that. This is gray. The ranch is listed in the will, part of the inheritance of little Joseph Carmichael. Is Mrs. Gray the other lady? What about the father, Richard? The bypassed, except as his son's guardian and therefore a trustee of the estate. Richard doesn't get any money, but he still controls his son. His son is worth a fortune. Unless, for some reason, the boy dies before attaining the age of 21. In that case, the entire estate goes to charity. And there he was with his son who was weak, sickly, bedridden, couldn't even walk. Oh, man. Now that is messed up, but that I understand. Okay, that, I mean, I mean, it's horrible, but I get it. Like, he he didn't just kill his kid because his kid was sick. It was another crappy, greedy reason. I wouldn't have listened to your story for two minutes, but for something you said on the phone earlier. You said that this, uh, seance affair of yours happened three nights ago, right? Something happened here. Three nights ago, Linda, my daughter, woke up screaming after midnight. She said she'd seen a boy. Mm. He was trying to come up through the floor. What the frick? Staring at her. Here, in the middle. Oh my gosh, man. What we want is... Um... What you want, Mr. Russell, is to tear this room apart. Well, I have your phone number, Mr. Russell. I'll have to think about it. Well, we know. The viewer, the viewers know that it's down there, the body. Now, the senator is gonna, I feel like he might try to take him out or something. Oh no, oh no, I don't want to see the boy. I don't want to see it, man. It's 
camera work is making it seem like someone's outside. Oh, dude. I'm freaked out, man. What is it? Oh my god! Oh, okay. Good. Ah, oh, dude, that was freaky. That's so effective with, you know, so little. They're, they're making do with so little. I just realized the ring. And, and uh, I guess the Japanese film Ringu got inspiration from this, right? Because this was older than that. Wow. Oh no, he's got the ha hand. Oh man. It's a hand. I'll call the police. Yeah, that senator is screwed, man. This means his fortune could just get wiped out. It goes to charity. Do you have some idea who that child was? No, not really. What's not really mean? No. no. I'm gonna want statements from everybody. Playing it close to the vest, as they say, in the meantime. I think you should have told me. It's gotta be there. Without that metal, there's no evidence of nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was obvious you were holding something back. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think about that in that moment earlier, but probably he could, with his wealth, has some of these uh, cops on his payroll, or at least he could bankroll some of these guys to do what he wants. Man, I hope the senator or some of his people don't show up here. Someone's outside. Ooh. Ooh. That's cool. Reverse the footage there to make it look like it's coming out. But even if you found it, it's like the cops should have been there when you found it. Because now, you know, how's he going to prove that I did find it in the well? Church, September 8th, 1900. Joseph Patrick Carmichael. You have to show it to the police. It's the only piece of solid evidence we've got. They didn't see me dig it up. They couldn't find it. Why should they believe it was there? Exactly. Okay. Police aren't going to trouble themselves with a 70-year-old case. Whatever is to be done has to be done by me. And I've got to get to Carmichael. You won't see you now. You'll see me. Oh, man. Hold on, Senator. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm John Russell. I'm living in your house. Senator, look. Look, I want to talk to him. I want to talk to him. Let me go. Look at this medal. It's a baptism medal. It's buried with a body. The police know about it. Okay. That wasn't super smart because they could have taken the medal. Dale, I want you to radio back to police headquarters, Captain DeWitt. I, I knew it. These people are going to do what he says. So he had another one made for him. Ugh. I mean, he's not responsible for the death, but the reason why he would hide all this is because he's going to lose his fortune. Whoa. He's not happy. Son of a bitch. What is it you want? What do you want from me? I've done everything I can do. That echo. And what's this captain gonna do, Captain DeWitt? My name is DeWitt, Captain DeWitt. I'd like to talk to you if I may. Alright. Quite a house. <laughs> is this where you held your seance? What was it you wanted to talk to me about? You were out at Boeing Airfield this morning, Mr. Russell. They tell me you caused quite a scene. Sergeant Durbin tells me you were up to some strange things last night, too. Only Sergeant Durbin said you told him you had no idea who those bones were. No idea at all. 
making crazy accusations against Senator Carmichael. I made no accusations. Senator Carmichael, who is not about to give in to any dirty little blackmail scheme. Blackmail? You heard me. What are you talking about? Calm down, buddy. I understand you lost your wife and daughter a little while ago. Maybe it shook you up. Maybe you need help. I'd like you to leave now. We can see that you get it. You understand what I'm saying? Out, now. Listen to me, Russell. You've got something of the senator's. He wants it back. It's a little gold medal, a family heirloom. He lost it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry to bother you know, like this, but oh, I'm so on. damn mad. This more. There you go. I don't want you to say anything. I take it now, or I come back in an hour with a warrant and a crew, and we tear this place apart. I'll be here. Suit yourself. Dirtbag. That guy's good at um, looking creepy and playing creepy. He's not intimidating to me, but he does look look the part of uh, like a henchman. Senator Carmichael thinks he's being blackmailed. Uh, they've canceled your lease. They forced me to resign from the society. No explanation, no reason, nothing. I have an appointment with the head of the board of directors. I'll see what I can find out. Jeez, Senator's getting revenge on him. Jeez, man. What's he going to do with it? Is he going to hide it or is he just going to keep it on his person? This could be if the senator shows up to the house. That could be what the ghost wants. I'm sure the ghost would actually hide it for him. He's got the power to do that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Whoa, what the frick, man? The ghost did something to DeWitt. He got into an accident or something. Yes. I was driving by and I recognized the car. I don't know how it happened. And it's upside down in the middle of the road. DeWitt, he's dead! Wow. Carmichael, you... you <laughs> look what you did, man. You roped this captain in to do the dirty, and now he's dead. Captain DeWitt, what did he say? What? Oh my god. Well, Russell, let me have that number. He's coming to the house? This is what the ghost wants, man. John Russell, the senator is expecting Oh, okay, never mind. It's the opposite. He's going to the house. Look at the size of this house, man. Mm. Has the light ever been on in that room before? Dressed for the occasion, I see. What are you going for, you Hefner? All right, just what the hell do you want? You must have some idea, otherwise I wouldn't have got past the door. The house on Chestnut Park. The family lived there until 1906. There's something in that house, a manifestation. This afternoon, Captain DeWitt came to see me, presumably on your behalf, so you must have known what's happened. I tried to talk to you at the airport. They brought it. They could just take it from him. DeWitt said you'd lost it. I found him in the grave where the child was buried. I believe he was killed in an attic room of that house. And I believe it was Richard Carmichael, your father, who murdered the boy, his natural son, Joseph Carmichael. Then there was a substitution from the Sacred Heart Orphanage and returned to inherit an empire. Yep. That changeling was you. Changeling, they said the name, okay. That was a weird cut. Is this made for TV or something? How much? My God. Oh, God. This isn't blackmail. I've been dealing with vermin like you for years. Incredible. Truly it terrifies you, doesn't it? The truth, it won't be buried. Get out. None of this belongs to you. Filthy lies. I should have gone to that dead child. You suspected something was wrong all your life. You're the beneficiary of the cruelest kind of murder. Murder for profit. No! <sighs> My father was not a murderer. Nobody in this world can say that. My father was a great man. He was a loving man. 
to come in here and accuse him of, of killing. Yeah, good acting, buddy. He has to know. I will not allow you to slander his good name. He's just leaving the the metal with him. These documents are on file with the city. The tape of the seance. There's no copy. What are you doing? Take it. I've done what I had to do. Rough. He's gonna try. You count on him to I do the right thing. Breathe one word of this. You wish you'd never come into this world. Why did he leave it with him, man? He's a dirtbag. He's not gonna do the right thing. I mean, I'm trying to think now. Oh no. I don't think what he did would appease the spirit, right? The spirit wants more than that. She could be walking into something dangerous here. John? I tried to call. John? Oh god. John, where are you? What are you doing, spirit? Why do you want to mess with her? John? Joseph's coming. Oh, no. John, please. I don't want to come up there. Oh, God. Why is the spirit doing this, man? Maybe it's not happy. Oh, God. Oh, I'm chicken skinning again. I mean, it's, it's a small wheelchair. <laughs> it's not... It's not supernatural power. Oh, jeez. Yeah, with these cuts, this had to be made for TV or something. Yeah, come to think of it, with how he left the stuff with the senator, I'd be pissed off too if I was the ghost. Dang, look at that chandelier, man. What? Oh no, now the chandelier is gonna fall. What? Where'd the fire come from? Whoa. Dude. Ghost is just like, I'm gonna do it myself. Get up. I don't like that thing swinging. Oh no! <sighs> How did the senator get there so fast too? Okay. That's like a go down with the ship kind of deal. Did he bring the metal with him? He's being shown it too. Oh, the senator was never there. He was just kind of seeing it. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now with him gone, does his fortune go to charity like it was supposed to? Oh, or is he still alive?
No, he was dead, right? Because they had the Sheeta over him. They didn't have any, like, life-saving equipment on him. Dang. This is 1980. They really set that place on fire, man. Wow, they really burnt this place down. Look at that. It's just sitting upright. Last time we saw it, it was upside down. The music box survived, too. Oof. Wow. Oh, man. That was great. We just got done watching The Changeling, 1980. Good movie. Yes, this was a small budget, like I said, but they made do with so much, you know, with so little. Excellent film. I like it kept me engaged, uh, kept me guessing. It was, you know, uh, parts of this had a lot of tropes that are in other horror movies, which since this was set in 1980, could you even call it a trope then? This was one of the OGs, right? So uh, I guess you couldn't really consider them tropes, but things you see a lot in horror movies, this movie had some of that stuff in it, but it still stood out on its own. And uh, it was unique from other, you know, haunting, haunted house kind of movies. And for me, the biggest thing that sets it apart is just the fact of how wide ranging the story becomes. The scale of this one is just so, it seems so large for what starts out as, uh, you know, what you think is a father just, you know, killing his son. It's, it's way more than that. Yeah, everyone in this movie complimented each other and everyone played their parts really well. Uh, even when I was mentioning about the guy who played Captain DeWitt, uh, John Colicos here. Excellent job from him. Uh, of course, George Scott killed it in this movie. Uh, the only criticism I have of any of the acting in this movie would be on his part, but it's a more of a minor thing. Just his the way he portrays Shock, uh, I feel like it could have been better. It could have been a little bit more you know, like playing into that role a little bit better. Uh, and I get everyone experiences things differently, but I would have liked to see a little bit more actual uh, shock on his part, you know, and uh, when he sees things, he just kind of, I don't know, it just came, a little, came off a little deadpan. But like I said, that's a minor thing. Aside from that, this uh, the acting in this movie was awesome from, on everyone's part. Uh, and yeah, I, it, you know, it turns out I said in the beginning of this reaction, I don't know any of the other people when the movie starts. If I do know them and re recognize their face, I'll say something. I didn't know anyone else in this, uh, but this was um, a very well put together movie. And I'm, like I said a million times already, I'm so impressed with uh, how, how effective it was on such a small budget. It must have been for made for TV because it had a lot of those cuts like where it would be going to commercial or something. But uh, even at the very end of this, before it got to the credits, it kind of did that kind of cut style. But um, I'm glad I watched this. This was an excellent movie. Uh, if I had to rate this, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I would watch it again. I would recommend it to other people. Uh, nothing in this, this movie, like, outright absolutely terrified me. But there was some terrifying moments. This one... I don't get goosebumps super often when I watch horror, but this one did it. This one was just so creepy that it was it was giving me goosebumps. Yeah, what else can I say about this that I didn't already say? The score was awesome. I really like how uh, you know a piece of music was kind of a, a main a major thing in this with the music box. Yeah, uh, excellent movie. I think I've said everything I need to about it now, but. I, you know, the changeling from, with Angelina Jolie, I don't know if that's like a, let me know guys if that's like a, um, you know, a remake of this or something, but uh, anyway, I will wrap this up. If you're still here, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you got something out of this reaction, and if you have any other movies or shows you want me to check out, please let me know in the comments, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.